Good morning, everybody. It's Mima. Um, as Colt would say, Mima. Anyway, I am making this video for my good friend Tina in Tennessee, and uh, she had asked about kombucha because I told her I drink a bottle of kombucha every day, and um, it, it's good bacteria for your gut. Um, if you want to know what the good benefits are, you can look it up yourself. Um, I'm not going to get into that today because I want to try to keep the video as short as possible so that I can upload it properly. So you're going to need one cup of water, one cup of sugar, eight black tea tea bags. I prefer Tetley British Blend, but you can buy the Walmart brand or whatever, the plain label black tea. Um, you can use that. So anyway, what you're going to do is you're going to take your one cup of water and one cup of sugar and bring it to a boil in a small saucepan. When it comes to a boil, you're gonna put your eight tea bags into the water, give it a quick stir so that all the tea bags are immersed in the water. Then, you're gonna cover it, like I just covered it with a plate because I need the plate to put my drained tea bags on. I already drained my tea, my, like, not drained, but I already took the tea bags out to save on time, okay? So then, um, you probably don't have these, but you can put them in a refrigerator. And you can put this in a refrigerator in a pitcher or whatever. Um, keep in mind that if you put it in a, um, a container that's got a spout every now and then, you'll have to take it out, dump the kombucha into a pitcher, and clean the new scoby that formed around your spout out so that it, it free flows. Um, I have these, I bought these, they, I bought them on Amazon. Um, they are fantastic. I like my kombucha a little fizzy. It kind of smells like beer. Um, it tastes like apple cider. It is not apple cider. It is not apple cider vinegar. It is not anything to do with apples, but that's what it does taste like um, if I make it the right way. Um, if you let it sit too long, it will turn into a kombucha vinegar. Um, and usually when I need to pause the the fermentation process. Um, I'll just let it sit and won't make another kombucha. Um, I'll just leave that one sit and then when I'm ready to make it, all I have to do is bring it back out and start making kombucha again. So the other thing that you're gonna need is you're gonna need two liters of cold water and a scoby and of course your kombucha. I will show you what a scoby is. I gotta put my hands in this so I'm gonna I'm gonna um, wash my hands real quick. Okay, the other thing that I have is I have this. So I'm gonna take my SCOBY out, which she is a beautiful SCOBY. She's nice and bubbly. This is my SCOBY. I'm making a mess here, let me back up. And as you can see, I've got like several layers. The bigger your SCOBY is, let me try to get just one for you. The bigger your SCOBY is, the faster it cooks. That's the only way I can put it, SCOBY, okay? Um, I usually reduce mine down. I will cut up the excess SCOBY and I will feed it to my chickens. It's good for them, but I cut it up first. You can also eat it too. Um, it's somewhat like a, a funky gummy bear, um, but it will form other layers. I'm trying to see if I can't get a good layer for you because I kind of destroyed it pulling it out of the thing. Like here's a layer. And, um, oh, here's the other half of the other part. See, it, it forms layers. Okay, um, this was, those those were actually, I had two, two round scobies in here and it'll start forming another layer and membranes and stuff like that. So what I do is I'll take the scoby I wanna keep and I'll put it in here, okay? I will not add anything to it just yet because what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my picture my pitcher 
and I'm going to strain my SCOBY with a cheesecloth. I use the same cheesecloth for my kombucha. I don't use it for anything else but kombucha. So yes, it's got, it's dark, it's stained. Well, the only thing I use it for is kombucha. So I just use the same one. So I'll get that. My cheesecloth. See how dark it is? And I usually just cover the wrong container. Cover the pitcher with it. Kind of divot it in so that um, when you pour it in, it'll strain. It'll strain fairly quickly. It's not like using a tea thing. So I'm not going to stir this up. I don't want to stir it up because I want that stuff at the bottom. Another membrane part of the tea. So you can't see what I'm doing. As you can see, it's got a little bit of bubbles. That's the fermentation of the kombucha. Some people don't strain it. I like to strain it. Um, when I'm drinking kombucha, it's a little off-putting to have a piece of SCOBY membrane go down your throat. Um, so I do strain it, um, but you don't have to. It's not taking any of the healthy parts out of the kombucha. Um, it's just making it to where you're not drinking the membranes. All right. I'd take a peek, see how full, see the membranes that it caught. When I open these for the first time, there will be a little tiny baby scoby formed around the top. I just use a straw to get it out or dump it in a glass. But when you dump it in a glass, you have to drink it out of the glass and not out of the jar. Cause it'll learn, it'll lose the fizz unless you really don't care about the fizz. All right, so my two liter pitcher is full. So I'm gonna set this back onto my kombucha jar. So it, whatever's left in my thing will drain back into the kombucha and when I wash these I put the lids on them because I don't want dust getting back into the jar so all I have to do when I go to make kombucha is open them up and fill them back up again um, I use a funnel to fill them. I usually make a mess when I do this. They did send me a, a funnel with a, I bought a kombucha jug that's actually made for making kombucha. And they sent me a funnel and a jar scrubber with it, but I do not use, I use the jar scrubber, but I don't use the kombucha funnel because it's all floppy and stuff and that makes even more of a mess. So I usually fill this, I don't know if you can see, but see where it's right here? That's about, I, I, I'll give it another little squirt. But I like to fill it about an inch or so from this rib and not from here. 
The reason being is, is if it gets too fizzy and you go to open it, this thing will shoot straight up in the air. It'll pop so hard that it'll this will fall apart and it'll fly across the yard. I've had to have the boys take them outside, open them outside because it'll open like a champagne bottle and fizz everywhere. And I don't want that. So I give it a little bit more headroom and I make sure they don't sit for, for like a lengthy period of time anymore. So there's my first one. And what I'm gonna do is mark on my calendar today's date and um, I will check one I'll check one of the ones for uh, fizziness by just popping the cap. Um, and once it gets to my desired fizziness, see what I mean? I, I make a mess when I do this, it goes all over. When it gets to the fizziness to, um, that I like, um, then I can put them in the refrigerator. It'll stop fermenting them. Um, so this stuff here is already a little busy. Yeah, I don't know if you can see it's, it's fizzing up the neck of the bottle, so I can't pour it in there. So you just keep doing this until this is gone. <sighs> it's telling me I need to wait. <laughs> I am so impatient with these things. this much left in the here so I'll set this one aside for the next load and usually before the next load I clean up what I spilled all over the counter because and I'll tell you in a minute when we get to the um, kombucha um, jug when we make new kombucha move this off to the side bring this back over here I did something wrong. No, I didn't. I didn't do something wrong. Sorry about that. Never mind. I thought I did something wrong. Confused myself already. Boy, that's not hard to do around these days. So, anyway, put this back in. Kombucha. And you're going to strain it all down except for about a cup. <clears throat> And I don't know if you can see all that stuff on the bottom. This is why I said I didn't want it stirred. Because that is living yeast. And I am going to put that. I'm going to save the rest of it. In with my SCOBY. So before I do that, I usually give it a really good stir. Mix it up. It'll get milky looking, as you can see. And I'm gonna pour that in with my SCOBY. Let me see how well I did. Um, let's see. Oh, it's about two cups, so it's fine. It's fine. Um, I'm gonna take this off, because we are, we're done with this. And when I wash this, this here, um, I wash it with my whites. I do not use fabric softener on it. Sometimes I'll wash it by hand in the sink and then hang it dry. Okay. So I'm going to give this a quick rinse. You can use kombucha for cleaning. It makes a wonderful cleaner.
This jar looks like one of the kids got it. It's clean, but I don't want to use it. I can tell by the out look at the outside that they probably had it open, stuck their fingers in the jar or whatever. So what I'm gonna do, I have not had my kombucha today. And I am going to have a glass of kombucha. This will be fresh kombucha. There's about a glass left. Perfect. It's really good. A little tart. I let it sit too long. Woohoo. Okay. So, that is what happens when you let kombucha sit too long. It gets too tart. All I do with this is I rinse it out. I don't use soap on it because soap kills your SCOBY. So um, you do how you do. I know that this has worked for me. I've been doing it like this for years. No, it's not gonna make you sick, okay? So what I'm gonna do is move this out of the way for now. I'm gonna take this and put it in my two gap my two quart pitcher with cold water. Making sure to rinse it out. Stuff like that. So that you get all the the syrup and sugar into it. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pour this, check temperature, which is cool. It's not cold. And I'm going to pour it in here. And then I'm going to get another two quarts of water. So making the kombucha is really easy. You don't have to do anything. It's not time consuming. Um, it really isn't because it, it does its own thing sitting on the counter. I do have a disclaimer though that I need to let everybody know. And the disclaimer is this. If you suddenly decide that you want to start drinking kombucha, please go slow. Like maybe on the first day, only have like four ounces. Um, do that for a couple of days and then you can bump it up to like six or eight ounces. And then you can really, right after that, you can bump it up to a whole jar or a whole um, container. Um, because if you drink the whole container, um, I cannot be responsible for explosive bowel movements. Um, it's not, it, it will give you the poos, but it's not painful poos. It's just, it'll give you the poos. So I'm going to add more water to this because this is one gallon. And, but I'm only going to fill it up, say, to about an inch from the top of the rim. And that's because I need to add my SCOBY that I grew. Yes, I made my own SCOBY. And actually, you know what? I think I'm gonna use a new SCOBY that grew. This is the new one. Yeah, it looks yucky. And that's because I messed with it. But I'm gonna put this in. Ew. Get a piece off of my finger. And then I'm gonna come back here because I want this one to grow some more. So, and I'm gonna get this scoby that I grew. I grew all my own scobies. The ones that I bought online, I actually fed to the chickens. I'm gonna dump this leftover kombucha that I saved out into my tea. That's why I saved room. So I want this scoby to 
I'm gonna put it on top of the other SCOBY. It may fall to the bottom, it may not. Who knows? Um, SCOBYs are kind of funny. So I'm gonna get a wet piece of paper towel here. just damp because I want to wipe the whole side top and bottom I want to wipe it all down and there's a reason for this I want to make sure that there is no kombucha left on the outside of the jug um, I use another cheesecloth well folded for my top okay and Actually, it goes like this. I also date when I make it. Or you can put the date that you think it'll be done. It depends on how warm it is inside your house. And then I put a rubber band around the top. This will sit on my counter for, since I'm using a new SCOBY, it might be seven days before it's done, depending on how warm. Five days if it's warmer in here. Okay, so I'll have to write the date today. I usually write today's date down to find out when I made it. Um, that way I can measure um, whether it's done or not because I know my house now. So in these jars here, two, three, four, five, six. So there's six jars that I have full of kombucha. If I drink one jar a day on the seventh day, I have to make kombucha and I usually get a glass and maybe a little bit left over. Um, and I will drink that. I don't drink any more than that. Um, I don't drink it like I do iced tea or anything like that because kombucha, it is a healthy drink. It does taste wonderful. Um, the, the symbiotic colony eats the sugar and the probiotic is what's left over. So it still has a sweet flavor, but it's not sugar no more. I know I've seen all the pros and cons. Kombucha made me gain weight. Kombucha this, kombucha that. Well, I, I will tell you that kombucha itself, if you are, if you're making it the right way, it will not make you gain weight. Um, so that is my own personal opinion. It, I've not seen people gain weight on kombucha unless they're like not fermenting it the, all the way. You will know when it's fermented when bubbles start forming at the top of your SCOBY up here. Right now it's bubbly because I just made it. But you'll have bubbles and you'll see what I mean. Um, you can actually take a straw and stick it down in there, pop and, you know, um, put your finger over the top of it to taste it to see if it's fizzy. Um, most of the time, once it's fizzy, it's, it's done, it's ready to be drank. If you wait too long, It'll get really, really tart, like vinegar. Um, so this here that I just made, I let it sit. I know I let it sit too long, but I've been really busy. So I haven't had time. So it probably sat for an extra two or three days before I made this batch. So I may not drink this batch. I might use it in cooking. Um, I will use it to replace any vinegar, that any vinegar recipe. I usually have... Uh, salads every day and I have um, I do have a vinaigrette dressing. You can use your kombucha for the vinaigrette dressing. It tastes fantastic. So um, that is how you make kombucha. I'm going to wait about four or five days and then I'll test this. I leave this, these, let me take this out of here. I usually leave these sitting on the countertop for about four or five days and then test it for its fizziness by opening it up to see how much it's got when you open it. Um, when it's got enough fizz, it'll it'll pop like a soda pop can, like, but it won't blow the top off. And then you can just put it right in the refrigerator and it's ready to be drank. But this right here that I just tasted is a little tart. So when I drank it in the back of my throat, like if you drink vinegar, you get that little burny feeling in the back of your throat. That's what this did. Um, so I think this is like really prime right now because it tastes good, but it's got a little bit of a bite to it. Um, so we'll see what, what the second fermentation does on in the jars. So that is how you make kombucha. Um, to make your own SCOBY, you, you take uh, one cup of kombucha from the grocery store. Um, and I used the 
uh, raw kombucha. I think it was uh, ginger. I think it was a ginger flavor. And um, so uh, it was a raw kombucha from the store, from Walmart. And um, I used a cup of that. I mixed my one cup of water, one cup of sugar. I steeped eight tea bags in it. And I mixed the two cups together and put them in a mason jar. And I covered the mason jar like I did here. And I put it up in the cupboard and left it up there for about eight, nine days. Um, after eight or nine days, you'll see that a scoby is forming around the top of the mason jar. Um, you can then take that scoby out and make new kombucha with the scoby, but not to drink. Um, I like my scoby a little bit, th uh, a little bit thicker. So what I did to feed my kombucha is I just did another cup of water, another cup of sugar, eight tea bags, boiled that up, let it steep, put it in with the other kombucha after it was cooled down. It has to be cooled completely because the heat will kill it if you just pour it in there. Um, and that is how I made that. And, um, I made my own scoby. It turned out fantastic. And now my kombucha tastes wonderful. It's, it's really good. It doesn't taste like the stuff you buy at the store. Definitely not. It definitely is a lot, lot, lot better. So if you have any questions, you can always message me. Um, but this is my kombucha making video. And I guess I will see y'all on the flip side. All right. Bye.